Welcome everyone, Costin here with a discussion about Manor Lords and my top three tips to having a successful start in the game, being able to survive winter, not having your villagers starve, and being able to grow a very large village indeed. Now the first one is to simply ignore the tutorial and build what you actually need. So the first objective is to build is going to be building a granary, logging camp, hunting camp, or forger hut, uh, dependent on whether or not you have berries or wild animals closer to you, and a storehouse. But you can ignore building the granary and storehouse. In fact, it's a waste of wood and workers initially to do it. You do want it eventually to store all your food or all your goods, but not at the very start. Instead, here's what I advise you to do. First off, build a logging camp. Actually, first off, go to your hitching post where you have your oxen and put at least one worker, if not two workers. Your oxen are important when it comes to building structures and collecting timber. And then once you've put your two workers there, you want to construct a logging camp above everything else since they'll fell the trees in the forest. Now, here's what you need to know though about felling trees. When uh, these guys are also going to help construct buildings. And while the workers will cut down the trees, they will not be able to move the logs on their own. The only ones that can move the logs are the oxen. You start with one, but ox oxen is also instrumental in building the houses because it's going to move the logs uh, necessary to construct houses and construct buildings. So you, you have a bottleneck from the very start with that. So be aware when you're constructing anything that while you're constructing, if you don't have more than one oxen and you won't, will only start with one, that you will not be gathering more wood. Another thing that is also crucial is to get a well. Getting a well is important because people want drinking water. And then after that, after you've gotten a logging camp and a well being built and prioritize the building speed on those, you can do so here in any building and increase the construction priority get the number of houses for as much wood as you have. For instance, here I constructed five. And then after the houses are built, you are also gonna want either a forger hut or a hunting camp. Now in this starting position over here, I don't have any berries, so I just went with the hunting camp. With the hunting camp, uh, you want to set the hunting limit to let's say uh, 10, maybe even five, because with the higher hunting limit, your workers will not hunt animals below uh, that limit. Though this isn't too big of a deal. Now, how many workers do you want? Well, you can fell quite a few trees, but once you've fallen, uh, once quite a few trees have fallen, your lumberjacks are not gonna have anything to do. So it's better to uh, put them to do other things. Another crucial building to get early on, uh, to get before winter, actually even during winter, you don't need to prioritize it me, I just built it here to show it, is the woodcutter's lounge, uh, lodge. Uh, they collect firewood, people need firewood to not freeze to death during the course of winter. And after that you can worry about everything else. Now, food-wise it's not going to be enough, or it could uh, be barely just enough uh, food from uh, hunting or collecting berries to survive the winter, but if you're growing a large village it will not be sufficient. Now my second tip here is that you want to get farms and fields going as quickly as possible. You, I don't have any workers right now on the farm because I've already planted the fields and they are growing. Now you do want to get grain or emmer as it's called and barley can be useful. Fields don't cost anything to set up, they're for free, but you do need a farm which can take, uh, which does take resources, and crucially, you start with two tools, so you can only build two farms. Uh, you can get tools pretty quickly if you get, uh, if you go to mining, you go with a mining pit, you then go into um, industry, and you get uh, a bloomery and a smithy, and that will give you the ability of getting tools very quickly in your game. But getting a field early on, the significant benefit of that is you do generally need to wait for those uh, fields. Uh, you do need, you generally need to wait for those field uh, for the grain to grow. In this case, uh, 
um, 24 uh, 24 days left now I don't have any workers on this because I don't need uh, need them right now wait until the fields grow and then assign workers and remember that your ox carts and, and keep building uh, uh, a burgage plot so you have more workers keep uh, getting wood and once you've collected the harvest you wait until the harvest is collected and then you uh, go into uh, farming and you s uh, build a windmill and you build a communal oven and that will make bread. If Stronghold has sh uh, has taught me anything is that bread is one of the best resources to keep your people alive. So if you can get bread before winter and if you rush the fields, right, if you rush the farm and you rush the fields and you can do an early ha harvest if uh, you're a bit too slow, I won't need that over here. But if you do rush, uh, rush the fields, then you can end up in a in a position where you don't need to hunt animals to survive the winter. The other thing you'll obviously need is to get a woodcutter lo uh, lodge before the winter starts. And with grain, and with grain, with a windmill, with farmers, with all that working you will be able to survive the winter with ease, get a substantial amount of food, not have your people starve or freeze to death. And that will be very significant for the success of your village. One thing to mention here is that if you can get tools, you can get vegetable uh, gardens in your burgage plots. You do need to build them in such a way that they're large enough, like they, they have the space for it, but you can then use tools uh, to make vegetable gardens. So focusing on tools early on can uh, net you quite a good amount. So yeah, getting a farm pretty quickly, getting fields pretty quickly, getting grain will give you some substantial uh, benefits to your village. Now here I don't have the wood for it because my ox has been uh, moving around worrying about construction rather than um, r r rather than picking up the fallen trees that I mentioned earlier but once uh, once the trees are collected once all of that is sorted I will be in a position to build a windmill and these guys have already uh, uh, collected the harvest so to speak collected uh, the grain and they're working on it by the way they have to process it from wheat into grain they have to transform that and then you can make that into, uh, then the grain can be transformed into flour, which you can then use, uh, which you can then use in a communal oven. And a single windmill and a commu single communal oven will be enough for you to survive the winter and have so much that you will have a significant surplus of food. I'm just gonna wait until this belt to show how ridiculous uh, this can get, because it is quite something once once it starts uh, going, really. So one worker on the windmill and a communal oven over there. I do have two free wor uh, workers over there, and the oxen is moving that. In fact, uh, multiple communal ovens might be useful for you to have because you're gonna generate so much flour. Even for t from two, uh, from a small field like that, you're gonna generate so much, uh, so much in terms of your ovens. Now, when it comes to fields, you do want to rotate crops. So I'm gonna put flax and then barley, and over here. Uh, Uh, cr uh, grain okay and I am generating like all of this grain will be made into flour and then it will be made into uh, into bread but you can do more with the bread than just simply eat it now the final tip concerns your oxen you start with one and you have a hitching post where they will be used. Now, oxen are used to transport the logs, get construction going, very useful to have. But 
your initial one isn't going to be enough. If you just rely on that first one, you will fall behind in construction, in terms of lumber uh, gathering, so your village will just simply not grow as quickly as it could. But thankfully, there is a way of dealing with that. A way that the game doesn't necessarily tell you, and you don't necessarily realize that oxen are so crucial. The way you deal with this is you buy them. But to buy them, you need regional wealth, which is represented over here. Now, regional wealth is acquired by selling goods through the trading post. In this case, I am exporting tools and I'm also exporting bread because bread sells for very, very well, very good sums. I'm also selling uh, flour and iron ore uh, and buying and also importing firewood because firewood can be a bit of an issue, uh, especially during winter. So anyway, what you need to do is you need to get a farm, get bread, get flour, and then assign traveling traders to the trading post so that they'll generate regional wealth. And then once you've got some regional wealth, you can build a livestock trading post. You'll need to do this anyway to get sheep for clothing. Um, but once you've got that sorted out, you can then go here and import oxen. The more oxen you have, the faster your construction is going to go, the faster you will collect lumber. Uh, it will be a much easier time. Now over here in this game, I've actually relocated my logging camp from my initial position around here uh, and built a tavern instead there. And I've relocated it here closer to the woods. I've only relied on a logging camp, but I can tell you that even with just one, uh, even with just one there, and I could get another one because I have some free villagers, but even with just one, the construction speed and the wood gathering rate is fairly significant. Not necessarily here because, well, uh, not necessarily here because uh, I, I still only have one camp, but you do need to balance it out between your camps and your oxen who are transporting the logs themselves. Now, Here's the downside to this. The game I don't think is well designed right now in terms of optimization to handle a large number of oxen. Performance wise, the game runs pretty well, but if you get too many oxen, it will slow down to a crawl. Uh, for my computer, it's about six or seven. And even, even at this point, I'm already seeing slowdowns. For instance, if I set up, let's say I want to set up another logging camp, you can see a bit of a drop in performance there. And then you will see the oxen moving with the logs to construct it very, very quickly. I've also set up another field here, uh, get, got more workers to the farm. And I am, well, I've completed all, all of the objectives over there. Got my burgage plots, paid the royal tax, got the Lord's Manor. Like this game is really fun because unlike so many other titles I've played, I admit, uh, once you understand the mechanics of the game, it's very easy to expand very quickly without dealing with a great deal of frustration, and I do like that. I feel like the storage capacity of granaries and storage spots could be better, because right now I am certainly encountering a lot of uh, uh, storage um, uh, storage issues. But yeah, uh, once you get going you get going in a fairly substantial manner and get that lagging camp uh, to cut down more trees to get more wood. Now what's gonna slow me down in collecting trees, like regardless of how many oxen you have, uh, when you're constructing something like, in this case, upgrading those burgage plots, um, when you're constructing something, it is going to uh, slow you down in a fairly uh, significant way. Uh, regardless of how many oxen you have. Having more oxen does help in a fairly substantial manner, though. And that's all there is to say. Costin, you're signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully when this game comes out of demo into the uh, early access and then the full release.